Hey, Drew, you killed this shit. Hey, Chia, 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 it's your boy, Wild Carmar, and I'm here on behalf of In the Four Corners of Wrestling. You know what it is. Throw them fours up, throw them quads down here with another special interview. I have a friend of mine that, hey, I got to be honest, I know him for quite some time. I'll, uh, give or take, uh, and my math is right, depending on if I can remember anything about it. You know, year and some change, almost two years of, of having a, a, a internet friendship with this guy, and hey, he came to me and was like, man, what can I do to help grow uh, in the four corners of wrestling? And I was like, you know what? Just we'll, 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 we'll shoot the shit. I mean, my guy has been around a lot of people in the wrestling business, talks wrestling, lives wrestling. Well, without further ado, goes by Cal, Dr. Quack. I mean, a lot of names. M matter of fact, what, what the hell are they calling you nowadays, bro? Well, they call me Dr. Quack. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> what's up as long as you don't call me late for dinner i'm fine <laughs> what's good with you brother man how you doing man oh i am living the dream thank you for having me on here uh you know what it is hey, hey you know i'm glad that you reached out and and i'm ashamed i'm ashamed because we have been uh social friends for uh on on facebook for quite a while and i have not even thought like Yo, why, don't, why don't i interview this guy shame on me shame on me it's all good. I'm glad you got me now, man. <laughs> Shame on me. But Quack, kind of kind of give your background uh in the wrestling business, uh, because not uh, uh not a lot of people uh are, are familiar with your story. So hey, let's start right there. Let's start with uh, uh some of the you know uh, uh promotions, territories uh that you kind of you know uh, uh got your start at in wrestling that you participated in, been around. So go ahead, let's start right there, man. I am the most famous nobody in the world. That's what I call myself. I mean, a lot of people know me, but not a lot of people want to claim me, but it's okay. I, I take that for what it is. It's who I am. But I will tell you, I started out in professional wrestling in, in 1999, right around the tip end of the Attitude Era. I was in the Army at the time, and I saw this paper. It was uh, from the Fort Hood Sentinel. It had an article in it about a guy that I know later on. His name is uh, Mr. Mayhem. He was just starting his career down here, and uh, they did an article on him about his match. And at the bottom it said, would you like to be a professional wrestler? Call this number. <laughs> so, so I called the number, and I was like, and he's like, how much you weigh, kid? And I was like, about 180. He's like, how tall are you? About 5'10". He's like, all right, well, come on down. We'll figure out something for you. <laughs> That man um, is known as the Necro Butcher. You would most likely know him from the movie The Wrestler. He was the one with the staple gun. He's considered the grandfather of hardcore wrestling. Okay. And um, I came down there, and I remember my first practice when I got when I got the training because we had the first thing you do is you learn how to bump, you learn how to fall. Yeah. You know, and, and you take a couple moves. I took a hip toss, and when I came over, you're supposed to land on your back. I ended up landing on my side. And I remember it because after the practice, I was dragging my left leg upstairs to my barracks room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you know, and this is the big thing about professional wrestling. 99% of the injuries are your own fault. Mm. You know, but I've been a lot of places. I, I started out in uh, Texas where I got to wrestle. Um, I wrestled down there for NWA Southwest, uh, Capital Texas Power Wrestling. Shawn Michaels, TWA, is where I had my first match. Okay. I took on a guy named Big John Murder. He he was definitely something else. Um, you know, and they talk about, here you go. I'm going to use some wrestling terms here. So for all the marks, the fans out here, here you go. You know, you, you've got light and stiff. You know, you got light, you got the air punch, you got the light, and then you got the stiff. You know, you want that snug out there, that realism. Well, this mm -hmm. guy was kind of a air puncher you know and yeah. when when you're working somebody like that you have to sell yeah and, and it's a hard thing to do when you're not getting touched you, you have to be able to sell the sell the move and everything um all i remember is going back there Shawn michaels wasn't there at this time at this show 
But all I remember is the booker coming up saying, because I originally went by a guy named Davey Kemp. That was my name. No name jobber. Got beat up. Pay me, pay me. <laughs> yeah, that was that, That's how you broke into business back in those days. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. Pin me, pay me. That sounds like <laughs> you know, job squad like Al Snow. <laughs> that's look. That almost sounds a little Deshaun watching territory. Is uh, pin me, pay me. I mean, right? be careful. Man. <laughs> oh God, are we going to go into him now? Can, can we go? Okay, all right. I, I look. It's your show. I'll go into wherever you want. To. But you know, it's it's like you come out there. And he's like, Davy Kip, come here. John Murder, come here. All right, look. This is what we're gonna do. You're gonna come out there and you're gonna have a five minute squash match, and then you two guys are gonna come out and jack tag John Murder. That was my entire match. I had a green wrestling singlet on, you know, kind of like the Kurt Angle style, and I had some combat boots. I didn't have real boots this time. Those were expensive. But I went out here, I did my job. You know, all I can remember is getting put in a chin lock and, and he looking at me going, hey, you see that hot broad over there? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Conversation in the middle of the match, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do that all the time. God, you know, hey, man, th th throw, him near, throw me near over there, man. I want to see if I can land her boobs. See, you would see things like that, you know? It's, it's professional wrestling at its finest. <laughs> but... <laughs> I wrestled down there for three years. I didn't have very many matches in Texas. I was more of going through training. Yeah. Um, I got to do that. I got to do a lot of ring crew security at that point. You know, I was in the military, so I didn't have a lot of time. I was getting deployed, things like that. 2004, I got out of the military. Yeah. You know, after my deployments. And I went um, to Tennessee. I was going through ACAP, which is like pretty much setting up a resume. So I actually created a resume for a promoter. Uh, his name was Tom Davison. Tom Davison was a, was a great man that came out. Uh, he ran the IWF Tennessee, later became the AWA Tennessee. Um, so I talked to him, and he put me up against a guy that I didn't, I didn't know him, but we were both in the same unit. I, I was in, at the time, 1st Battalion 187 Infantry, and he was in 3rd Battalion 187 Infantry. So we were in the same group right there. He was an infantry guy. I was a medic. That's how Dr. Quack was born. Yeah. And um, – yeah, we, we went out there and we just started going out. He's like, I want to book you guys in a program. Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. So we're going out back and forth and fighting each other. Um, 2004 was one of my favorite years in wrestling for me for a lot of reasons. Um, it was where I really got my big break. I took on a lot of great guys. Um, I ended up winning my first championship there in a stretcher match. For those of you at home, a stretcher match is when you got to knock somebody down and out and have to be carried out on a stretcher. Yeah, and I'll tell you after, after that match, I had three knots on my head right here and here, here, and you can see it. I have actually matches on YouTube, but yeah, that match I have knots from chairs. Oh, took took some uh, some some nasty chair shots, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I got to wrestle for Harley Race out there in World League Wrestling. Um, I, I wrestled a lot in the Northeast. I I retired from the ring ninety five percent of the time, you know of it. About 2013, I went to the backstage, and that's where I loved actually being. I loved being there back backstage, helping the uh, promoter. I was COO of Stranglehold Wrestling at one point, um, basically day-to-day -day operations, working with uh, vendors, working with um, wrestlers, You know, doing a lot of scouting, looking for, hey, do we want this guy here? Hey, if we bring him in, can we book him against somebody else? You know, you have to be able to do a scouting report. If you're going to be involved backstage, you have to be able to do that. Because if you book the wrong person and they come on and they embarrass you, it is horrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so kind of kind of speaking to that, um, the difference between obviously uh, being in front of the scenes and being behind the scenes, uh, are they both just as hectic? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's more fun in some respects, you know, to go out there in the crowd, especially if you're a heel. You go out there and say, shut up, kid. Shut yeah. up, old man, or I'll break your hip. You're watching an artiste in action. <laughs> you know, sorry, that's yeah. no good. I haven't done that in a while. But, <laughs> but you get to do that stuff. You get to entertain when you're the heel and you pull the tights and, and the fans are pissed off and are throwing trash in the ring and yeah. all sorts of stuff. That's great. But when you're backstage, you know, it, it can be hectic because when you have roughly a roster, let's say 20, 30, maybe 40 yeah. back there, and you've got a bunch of egos, you've got guys that go, why am I not champion? Why am I not going over? 
You know, you, you hear that. Yes, it's a scripted sport. Yes, we know this. But believe me, there's a lot of athleticism that belongs in it. I'm glad you said that because I've always had this, this uh, you know, this debate. And, you know, I've been a fan of wrestling for a long time. I'm attitude era, baby. Uh, it, it helped raise me. Uh, yeah. I say this because you do you have so many uh, athletic elements involved in wrestling. I know it's scripted. The result is. Uh, you know, so my thing is, is I don't, I don't, I never had an issue with uh, labeling uh, professional wrestling an actual sport because there is a lot of, you know, elements of sports involved in it, and you can never forget about the injury aspect. That's real. Um, oh, yeah. Just a lot of physicality and, and athleticism needs you. You got to have to do this. So, uh, where's your thought processes on it when you come to labeling professional wrestling? I mean. Of course, Vince McMahon, you know, now he's gone from professional wrestling, but, you know, sports entertainment, I think that's solid. I mean, I call it professional wrestling because that's what it was. That That's how I got interested in the business. I was four years old. I yeah. got to see Superfly Jimmy Snooker and Don the Rock Morocco in the steel cage. My grandfather, God rest his soul, looked at me and goes, you're going to do this when you get older. Yeah. I'm four years old. What am I supposed to say? No, you know, so <laughs> I studied it, you know, I learned it and, and I got into it. I did it for him because he loved professional wrestling. And and that's what I've always called it here. I mean, today's stuff, it's different. That, that, that's what I can tell you. Today's professional wrestling is different from the 80s, 90s, 2000s. I will tell you because now, now it's all about, you know, thigh slaps, you yeah. know, 50 spots over there, super kick, you know, guys going hey I, i'm a pro wrestler here for six months i made it to nxt nobody knows who i am but now i want to go be a uh, on a tv show i want to be a game show host or i, I want to go be on a um you know a drama series or something like that it's a stepping stone got you got you so i'm glad you said that because uh that's kind of what i was uh wanting to lead this conversation Where, where's your mindset out on on today's wrestling scene uh, on the main scene or indie scene, which, which one do you prefer? And, you know, uh, what's the reason why? Because I know we, as wrestling fans, we all got our, you know, what we enjoy to watch from uh, wrestling content, content wise. So kind of break it down on, on, on uh, the style of wrestling that you're into right, right now. Well, I'll tell you because today's wrestling to me is totally different. I mean, if I'm flipping on Peacock, I'm looking for 80s, 90s, 2000s wrestling. I am. I'm looking for interviews, you know, with guys. And that's that's the problem with today. Today, there is no larger-than-life living legends. There are none. There, there's Roman Reigns, who's a household name. Yeah. And then you got Brock Lesnar, who came from the Ruthless Aggression era. Yeah. Right? You got Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, the couple. Yeah. You know, and ESPN, thank you for shoving Becky Lynch down everybody's throats. Thank you. <laughs> totally appreciate that. Oh, God. Well, I, that is, you know, sidebar conversation. That's that's crazy how uh, so much wrestling is integrated with, like, ESPN on Main Street. It, yeah. It, 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 it never used to be like that. Yeah, I mean, they're talking about putting shows on ESPN again, professional wrestling. There, there's that whole aspect. Today's wrestling, like I said, is just, it's not the same for me. A lot of the guys, they, they use this as a stepping stone. And I watch today's professional wrestling. You know, like I said, spot fest. You know, it's here. Let's do this spot, that spot, every other spot, flip spot, you know, my spot, the dog spot, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> yes, good God. And, and it's like, you know, there's no realism in it. Fans, here you go. And I said this. I, I put a show out here on my podcast. By the way, ch check out my podcast, Dr. Black House Call. Sorry, I got a self-plug. No, that. no. Go, hey, no, by all means, go ahead. I'm on YouTube. I'm having some fun with that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's like in the 90s, there was rough, There was less people in the world, and there was more people watching on, on, Mon on Monday nights, Friday nights, Thursday nights, you know, every night there, six, seven million people. You look at it now. If you get 3 million viewers a week, That's you're weird. doing great. And, and Raw just had its lowest rated show. I think it was 1.1 or 1.2 in the 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. You know, things got to change. I, I think Kevin Sullivan said it best that it may evolve. It may mutate and become something different. And I think it will. Will it, you know, it, the wrestling world is a big circle. It really is. It's like it goes up and down. Right now, I would say we're right here because we're trying to build it up. I mean, 
They really do. They, they try to advertise it. Now you got TKO out there, Endeavor, whatever you want to call them, UFC, you know, owning this stuff. And they made that a great product. Yeah. Dana White is the greatest wrestling promoter in the history of the game right now. Right now. Okay. He, 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 he took, he took a lot of WWE and, and pro wrestling uh, mythologies here. And you bring guys up, you have that close fight, you know, where they're weighing in and he made those into his own. And that's what made USC successful. That, that, that's a fair point. Um, I was just having a conversation um, with uh, uh, an owner of an independent uh, company, uh, RCR, uh, uh, Redemption Championship Wrestling, uh, Jimmy. And, um, you know, I kind of, uh, we actually kind of had a similar conversation uh, to where we're going right now, as in it's literally, you see a lot of influences of wrestling bleeding in, out into other things, especially a lot of sports. Uh, I mean, you can name a sport, hockey, football, basketball, baseball. They're starting to have a little wrestling element of where you're starting to build this character of certain players, build a, a, a you know, almost like an interest. I, I saw it uh, uh, baseball. The closer comes out to his theme song and, and they got the uh, video montage going on. And I'm like, that is, uh, you know, that's such a huge wrestling element that is bleeding over into baseball nowadays where, they're coming out to, you know, uh, uh, Trevor Hoffman uh, used to come out in, uh, uh, to uh, Metallica. Same with uh, Mariano Rivera. I mean, don't, it, don't forget, you know, Major League out there where you had Wild Thing coming out. Yeah, to wow. Thing. <laughs> and, and, and now, you know, Moxley is is, is donning that, that song with him, too. So it's, it's funny that you say that. I just think it's um, because, you know, I, I describe wrestling as that stepchild or step sibling that you you. Uh, you know, you had, but you didn't want to admit to. And then now you see that wrestling kind of influences a lot of things in, in, in cultural, uh, you know, uh, uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a, 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 you know, a pop culture kind of uh, uh, influencer from time to time and people don't want to recognize it. I think that, I think it's time to recognize how much uh, influence uh, professional wrestling has in, in pop culture. I think I did. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. I don't know if I told you about this, um, but I got inducted into the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But but here's the wild story. It was 2020, right? Yeah. I found out about it. Of course, the place in Wichita Falls, Texas. It got shut down all through for like three years out of COVID. Yeah. And before they were able to open, um, people came in there and ransacked the place. They really took a lot of things that were memorabilia and things and destroyed the building. Mm. So, I mean, this was horrible. Yeah. Um, all I know is what I had in there was I was on a on a plaque there for getting inducted. I didn't have any of my merchandise or anything there for my wrestling career. So, I mean, that was cool. But I found out, I, I talked to my friend uh, who runs Stranglehold, the one who recommended me. Sometimes in pro wrestling, I will tell you, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I did a lot of work backstage, so I take take this honor, you know, with pride. I did okay in the ring, but I did a lot better backstage. And next year, he plans on running his final show. He hasn't put an exact date yet, but I will be there, and I will officially be inducted. I will get my plaque nice. to the nice. Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Nice, nice. I dig it. I dig it. Um, what are the chances of seeing Dr. Pratt in a wrestling ring taking a few bumps again? What, what are the chances? That's probably going to be zero. <laughs> You know, I mean, unless you're paying me a couple mil, which I know that ain't happening, but hey, <laughs> it sounded good. No, I, I will tell you, look, for anybody that wants to get involved in professional wrestling, wants to get in there, take care of yourself. I am 43 years old, okay? Yeah. Um, in my career, I actually at one time held the record for the most chair shots to the head in Tennessee. Mm. I had 18 in one match. Jeez. And it's not here. I'm going to put my hands up. No, it was look, mom, no hands smack right here. Yeah. And I, I will tell you, it, it can cause injury. It, it can. I mean, yes, this will not break, but the stuff inside will. Mm. Um, and right now I'm starting to pay for it. I will tell mm. you, always take care of yourself. Take care of your opponent. You know, it, it, it happens that accidents happen, but the more you can prevent them, the better off you are. So, yeah, hands up. That's why they don't allow chair shots in professional wrestling anymore, much to the head. They want you to hit them in the back all day long. Yeah. Man, that's wild. I, I, it's, so so kind of 
kind of kind of break that 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 fourth wall right there on, on on the you know the injury part and the stuff behind the scenes that most people won't see on on kind of like uh you know i guess the, the dark side of the wrestling ring type type scenario where um you're dealing with the pain you're dealing with you know uh thoughts in your head and, and, and trying to find yourself. So kind of speak on that. Cause I think a, a lot of people forget about that. There's a, there's a, a, a other side of the camera that doesn't get, you know, uh, the light shined on it. And, and I, I guess that not necessarily talked about as much. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, you, you, if you have watched dark side of the ring, you understand there's a lot of things out there that happen. I will tell you from my experience. I mean, I was Dr. Quack. I was a medic in the army. A lot of times I was getting booked for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't because I could just come out there and work a match, which they were good, you know, sometimes great, depending on who I worked. But it was more importantly, if somebody got hurt out there, mm -hmm. they had somebody there that, that was able to take care of people. And, I, and I've seen it where people have, you know, twisted their knees. They've, they've jammed their arms. They have became unconscious. You know, I, I will never forget this. Um, Gypsy Joe, rest his soul. Gypsy Joe was the most dangerous guy I've ever seen. He was five foot eight and 150 pounds. Um, I'm not going to swear on here, but you know, I'll, I'll just tell you. He looked at my partner, um, who was it was six foot three or six foot five, about 300 pounds, and he looks at him and goes, "You better hit me, mother effer. If you don't hit me, mother effer, I'm gonna if if uh, hit you." And he was cussing him out. Like in the ring, my partner, big giant guy like John Candy, you know, he came out soft. He he would hit you. He would tell him, hit me, hit me. And he came back and he'd lay into him, you yeah. know. But this one time, this tag match, he ended up taking on a, a guy named Jeff Bowman down in Tennessee, took the chair and hit him in the face. He had a split, right? Mm. He could stick his tongue out, you know. And, wow. You're talking and about like this. Split open and just ugh. oh yeah, yeah, these happen, you know, and that's where thank god I had medical equipment like butterfly stitches. I was able to put one of them on to hold it on there until he got to the ER. You know, he had a minor scar instead of you know, worse things that could have happened. I mean, you see a lot of things, a lot of head trauma, a lot of guys, you know, they get into their own heads, they they feel like, Man, I'm not good enough. Why am I not getting book places? Why am I not going over? You know, you, you get that psychological. If it happens to you a lot where, you know, you're getting booked against people and getting squashed, you're not getting your stuff in. Because everybody loves to get their stuff in. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, but, you know, the psychology plays in there with people. It, 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 it sucks. It's a lot of things where you have to keep positive. Even when you don't feel like going to a wrestling show, do not no show. Mm. Jesus, I, that, that is the worst thing to do. You know, if someone has you booked, is the no-show. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that and steel horsing. Do you know what steel horsing is? No, explain it. Explain it to, to, oh, to, to God. the viewers and the listeners. I'm telling you, they had a, a thing on this on ESPN, okay? So this is a real deal. There was a guy down in Florida. I believe this was 2014, somewhere in that area. You know, I'm sure somebody can be able to correct me on this, but steel horse was Sean. That's his name. Came out there and worked a match. Opponent got stiff with him. You know, stiff. He decided to call the police. <laughs> he decided to call the police and say this guy assaulted him. <laughs> the cops laughed at him. But like, it's wrestling, sir. <laughs> right. He made ESPN for being such an idiot. I'm mm -hmm. like, the guy never came back in the ring, thank God. I, I'm like, oh, man. It's professional wrestling. It's not ballet. You're you're going to take some shots, and sometimes accidents will happen. We can call those receipts. Yeah, you know, you're going to give somebody a receipt if they stiff you too hard. Yeah, well, like, oh, I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, one time, I mean, I was working Dempsey, and Dempsey was one of my favorite people to work. I, I will tell you, Dempsey would hit hard as hell. He was like a little Kevin Sullivan. He was stiff, you know. And I remember I took I just I took the chair and I put it right here and I got him in the throat a little bit. Didn't mean to, but I got him in the throat. Yeah. And, and he just looks at me. He's like, that was good. That was good. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> he knew that he was hitting me hard as hell, man. He was leaving nothing <laughs> in my head. 
<laughs> hey, hey, the receipts. Hey, when you cash them, it probably has a great feeling to it. You be like, oh, I remember that when you when you got me for this one. Here's your receipt. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, and that match got nominated for uh, match of the year in Tennessee. I was runner up for wrestler of the year in 2004 as well. Nice, nice, man. So, um, l- let me ask you this. Uh, how how important do you think those days of wrestling were to you, and and how how long are those memories going to last with you, man? Um, I mean, I love the memories. I, yeah. I, I always cherish the memories. You know, I, I had a conversation, and, and my dad talked to me about this. You know, because he was always worried about me getting to wrestle. He knew I was passionate about it. I wanted to do it. I I, I talked to him uh, sometime this year. And he looked at me, he goes, was it worth it? Mm. And and I go, in some ways, yeah, because I got to honor my grandfather. You yeah. know, it was something he enjoyed. It's something he got me in. Um, the physicality part of it right now, no. I mean, my, my body is, is having damage. I've had herniated discs in my neck and back. I've had damage on my left side, nerve damage, you know, brain damage, you know, from the chair shots and stuff like that. I mean, that, that part kind of sucks for it, but I don't regret it. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like I had a purpose out there in life, and that was my purpose. And now I get to, you know, talk to people and, you know, tell them, you know, about things and, and let them learn, like, hey, this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do, because I made those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, I, such a, I'm glad we were able to do this quite. I, I, I did too, man. Um, uh, and, and, and just, uh, you know, pick your brain, uh, obviously with those wrestling podcast podcast is to kind of pick your uh, brains and kind of see, you know, uh, uh, the good and the bad of, of what we love. Uh, because I think, uh, at the end of the day, I, we all have this own, uh, emotional, uh, sentimental, nostalgic connection to pro wrestling um and you know i i i never got in a wrestling ring and because of some of the reasons what you talked about the physical part is reason you know i i i'm a, I'm a pretty man you know i'm I, <laughs> oh jesus here we go i didn't know we were lying on this podcast here <laughs> You know, I, I don't want to damage this moneymaker. So, you know, uh, that's the reason why I never got in the wrestling ring. But it's, it's you know, even in the uh, uh, the arena that we met at in uh, promo wrestling, yeah. um, uh, that's kind of, you know, gives uh, regular Joe Smoes like me a chance to kind of, you know, uh, live that character, live that uh, life that we always envisioned to. But I never had the, uh, I don't want to say courage, but I just... I guess I was never given the opportunity to physically do it. And I'm okay that I wasn't given the opportunity to do it because <laughs> I, I know my lane. All right. I know when to let people that want it, you know, that don't mind taking that physical toll and, and entertaining. I'm okay. I must respect to you guys. I, I just know my lane. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, I will tell you the biggest thing you need in professional wrestling is this heart. Yeah. You gotta be passionate about it. You can't just go in there and say, "Oh, I'm gonna try this. This looks pretty cool." Because if you're not excited about doing it, you're not gonna do well. Yeah, yeah. Because because it's it's a uh, from from what I gather from a lot of people that I've talked to, even even uh, conversations I've had with you, it's uh, one of those type of jobs where uh, it's a thankless job. Uh, yeah. You you know. Uh, the reward is, is that you get to uh, cash a check. <laughs> the reward is, is that you get to entertain. That's the reward of it. And uh, uh, your body's not going to uh, enjoy it uh, down the line for sure. Uh, but, man, this was awesome, uh, Quack. I'm glad we was able to do this. Uh, before we get off, man, uh, one more time, man, let the viewers, let the listeners know where they can find you at, man. Well, I'm on YouTube. I'm also on Facebook. There's a Facebook page just titled Dr. Quack House Calls. There are some episodes about professional wrestling. I have also decided to talk about other things, um, and various things in life that I've learned. Like I, I talk about my military background, um, you know, what to expect if you're going into the military. I was also in the car business, so I talk about that as well. But I talk about various things in current events. Um, something I enjoy, you know, I, I get to talk about a bunch of stuff. Check out Dr. Quack House Calls. You know, you'll see them on there. Um, there you go. Yeah, man. I dig it. I dig it. Again, check out Dr. 
Quack House Calls on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, man, my brother, man, pleasure. This was such a pleasure. And y'all make sure y'all tap in with us every Sunday in the Four Corners of Wrestling with my brother, Jay Will, King Mel, Quavo. We dropping content every Sunday. And y'all know what it is. Throw them fours up. Throw them quads down. Check out all the content on 613 Fate Productions. So, on behalf of my good brother, Dr. Quack, I am the Wild Card Mar. We are out of here. And until then, y'all keep throwing them fours up and throwing them quads down. Peace.